press conference by Minister Hayashi will begin. The floor is yours, Minister. Thank you. I have one item to report to you. Substantive agreement has been reached between the Foreign and Defense Authorities of Japan and the United States on the substance of the host nation support for U.S. forces in Japan. In light of the tight fiscal situation and the increased severity of security environments surrounding Japan, it is very important that we continue to support the stable presence of the U.S. forces in Japan and at the same time effectively strengthen the deterrence and response capabilities of the alliance. And we have been consulting under such common notion. And under the substantive agreement over the five years between fiscal year 2022 and 2026, the host nation support to be borne by Japan will total 1 trillion 55.1 billion yen on annualized average basis, 211 billion per year. Let me uh, give you the highlights. First of all, support for utility expenses, an area where contribution to the strengthening of the deterrence and response capabilities is difficult to directly demonstrate, has been reduced significantly. The proportion to be borne by Japan will be reduced in a phased manner from 61 to 35 percent. And this will mean a reduction of approximately 28.5 billion yen over the five years. Secondly, we will be introducing a new expense line item to procure supplies that would contribute not only to the exercises of the U.S. forces in Japan, but to joint drills to increase interoperability between the self-defense forces and the U.S. forces. That will total up to uh, 20 billion in the next five years. Thirdly, uh, we will be prioritizing the establishment of facilities that would contribute to the readiness and resilience of facilities and areas. And this is expected to be up to 164.1 billion yen over the next five years. Through sincere negotiations, uh, we will be supporting the readiness and resilience of the U.S. forces in Japan, as well as the smooth and effective operations of the U.S. forces in Japan. Not only that, but secondly, we will also be contributing to the effective strengthening of the deterrence and response capabilities of the alliance, including the self-defense force, and we were able to reach a agreement on prioritized allocation based upon the tight fiscal situation. So far, uh, our focus has been uh, to support the presence of the U.S. forces in Japan, but with this substantive agreement, we have agreed to establish a platform that would lead to further strengthening of the alliance by using the host nation support. And based upon this, uh, we agreed to call this budget informally Alliance Resiliency Budget. Uh, now, so far, the informal name given to host nation support in uh, various reports was sympathy budget, but this uh, nomenclature did not reflect the substance of the support, and therefore, we will be attaching an informal uh, name to the host nation support, and we'll be calling this Alliance Resiliency Budget, and we will seek the understanding of the citizens. We would to as expeditiously possible uh, sign the special agreement and various uh, procedures underway uh, in both countries. And therefore, we will be asking the Diet to conduct deliberations aiming for entry into force by 1st of April. That's it from me. Uh, those of you who have questions, please raise your hand. One year, designated, please state your name and affiliation before you ask your question. Aoki from NHK, I would like to ask a question but, uh, concerning host nation support. The U.S. is still calling it host nation support, but concerning this alliance to enhance resilience, is there, isn't there a difference in how it is termed in Japanese and English? The English uh, will still continue to be host nation support. It will not change. And the Japanese government, uh, according to this agreement, by using this expense, we have agreed to create a uh, foundation that will further uh, strengthen the U.S.-Japan alliance. And therefore, in order to demonstrate the host nation support, we will be calling it the Alliance Resilience Budget.
Next question. I have a follow-up question. You said on the part of the Japanese government, but with regards to the name, were there any issues pertaining to how the name of the budget will be caught by the United States, but the name being changed only on the Japanese side? I may repeat what I've already said, but post-nation support is the English for Zainichi Beigun Chiryu Hifutan. But on the other hand, there used to be an informal name called Sympathy Budget or Omoyari Yosan. But we are going to be replacing that informal name to Resiliency of the Alliance Budget. Next question. Have a song, please. I have it from your meeting newspaper. So and also I have a related question. Uh, the Alliance Resilience Budget, uh, you mentioned that that would be the informal name. Within the LDP, uh, from the viewpoint of gaining the agreement or consensus of the population, it might be quite difficult to gain that. It's quite difficult to understand. I think that was pointed out by the LDP. So uh, how should we be understanding this? Uh, can we ask for your views? Well, until now, in, we have been focusing on uh, providing support to the U.S. forces in Japan, but based on this agreement, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, with this budget, uh, this will enhance uh, the readiness of the self-defense forces as well as enhancement of interoperability of the U.S. So this is uh, to enhance uh, the foundation for a U.S.-Japan alliance So we have agreed upon, and that is why we have decided to call this resilience uh, alliance resilience budget. So we have been able to explain this fully. Next question, Nobira-san. Nobira of Asahi newspaper. According to this agreement, you said utility expense support will be reduced, but on the other hand, a new line item has been established for procurement of supplies. So there has been a change in the substance. What do you think about that? M I've already mentioned the significance of this new agreement and with this new agreement, and again, this will be a repetition of what I've already said. Conventionally, host nation support attached importance on supporting the prisons, but this will contribute to the readiness of the self-defense force and interoperability with the U.S. forces in Japan and will contribute to the stronger platform of the Japan-U.S. alliance. Next question, please. From uh, AWJ. Now, concerning the relationship with China going forward, I would like to ask you a question on that. Next month or next year, 2022, uh, January 1st, Japan, China, and nine countries, uh, RCEP, will take effect. Uh, for Japan, the Chinese market is the largest uh, export market, even larger than U.S., and RCEP is going to be the first free trade agreement for uh, China, and I believe that there will be more interdependency with China as well going forward. But on the other hand, the LDP, uh, people who have experienced prime ministers, uh, they, I think they are have been making some comments as if there is going to be a war with China. And that Prime, former Prime Minister uh, Abe has said that if there is any incidents with Taiwan, that will be with China, that will be with Taiwan as well. And Mr. Abe also said that uh, you both U.S. and Japan will have to protect ourselves against China. So if, to protect China, uh, Taiwan will be to go into war with China, meaning that Japan will lose its biggest market and that will have major damage on the Japanese economy. So war or economy, I think the role of diplomacy is very large, but I would like to know your views on this. So uh, concerning the comments who are of people who are no longer in the administration, I'm not going to comment one by one. I would like to refrain from doing so. And based on that, RCEP was Japan in the world. Uh, concerning protectionism and nationalism, we are seeing such trends. And so, since the TPP-11, uh, U.S.-Japan trade and Japan 
EU, EPA, and also RCEP as well. We have been uh, promoting uh, and playing leadership in promoting free trade. So going forward, we will continue with a TPP 11 as well as RCEP. So with the, through thorough implementing of this uh, to expand free and fair economic zone as well as uh, multilateral uh, trade based on rules, we would like to promote these. Are there any other questions? Maeda san, please go ahead. Kyoto News, Maeda. Back to host nation support. The total amount will increase. What's your view? The utility budget support will be reduced, but that will be replaced by a new item to support the procurement of various supplies. Now, in the midst of uh, fiscal tightness, I guess the Japanese government did maintain a certain posture or attitude in the consultations, but what's your view on the total amount increasing? Two hundred and one point seven billion is the fiscal year twenty twenty one budget, but between twenty two and twenty six on per annum basis, uh, the average will be two hundred and eleven billion per year. So if you compare these two numbers, 201.7 billion and 211 billion, yes, this is an increase from this year's uh, budget. In light of the fiscal tightness and in view of the increased severity in the security environment surrounding Japan, we believe that supporting the stable presence of U.S. forces in Japan is very important. And we also need to effectively strengthen the readiness uh, uh, the deterrence and response capabilities of uh, the alliance. And that is why we have reached this agreement. And as I said, in light of the fiscal tightness, we will be prioritizing the expenses that are important. I think that kind of agreement was reached. Next question, please. Yeah, Higuchi from Chugoku, In the elections in October in the lower house, in Yamaguchi Prefecture, and also Yamaguchi City uh, executives uh, met with uh, members of your uh, supporting party. And uh, Mr. Murauga, Governor of Yamaguchi, is being questioned currently. Now, concerning this point, Minister Hayashi, so how, what is your understanding of the facts? And the minister and your aide, have you played any part in these solicitations? Because I would like to ask about these two questions. And uh, as you mentioned, concerning comments made by prefect, uh, the governor of Yamaguchi Prefecture, I'm aware of that. But uh, you have asked about the investigating authorities. So I would like to refrain from answering that question. Yes, please go ahead. Governor Buraoka's comment was made this, or, or you are aware that investigation is underway, an interview of a senior official is currently underway, but you're saying that you can't comment because investigations are underway? I've already answered that question. Any other questions? Make some, please. I'd like to ask a question and the relations between uh, Japan and South Korea yesterday. Uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, Vice Minister Mori had a, a meeting with the Ambassador of and you, and there was a uh, conversation concerning the relationship between Japan and South Korea. And I think uh, you mentioned here that you had a very short meeting earlier on. So what uh, was the background to this meeting? What kind of discussions were held, and going forward, are you going to be restarting ministerial talks going forward? Well, yesterday, uh, Vice Minister Modi went, met with uh, Mr. Kan a uh, South Korean ambassador to Japan, for a very short period of time. And the purpose uh, is, uh, or the, it is part of diplomatic activities in order to maintain and build a relationship with the diplomatic court in Tokyo. And uh, since this is diplomatic discussion, I would not like to go into detail. Next question, Nobira-san, please. 
the reader of Asahi newspapers on Hong Kong. At the Legislative Council uh, election, the voting rate was very low, and most of the winners were pro-Chinese. What's your take on the results of the election? On the 19th, the Legislative Council election was held for the first time after the change of the electoral system, and yesterday, the Hong Kong Special Administrative District's government announced the results. The international community has repeatedly demonstrated its great concern regarding the change of the electoral system, and Japan has also been demonstrating a great concern. And without such great concern of the international community being resolved, the Legislative Council election was held in Hong Kong. And I once again would like to demonstrate a very deep concern. It is important that relevant elections in Hong Kong are held in a fair manner that are open to candidates representing a wide range of political opinions, and Hong Kong should proceed and progress democratically and stably. That has been the constant position of the Japanese government. Free and open system must be maintained. So Japan will continue to, in partnership with the international community, seek the specific response of the Chinese side. And based upon such concept, the G7 foreign ministers announced our grave concern in our statement, and the foreign press secretary's statement was also announced. Are there any other questions? If not, this is the end of the press conference.